So if we're playing Battletech Combined Arms, and I define Combined Arms as in uh, the ability to take mechs, vehicles, infantry, air support, artillery, right? Completely Total Warfare, everything out of the Total Warfare book. There are certain units which, for the battle value, for what they bring, they are auto-include. And, and of course, we all have our favorite units. The problem with Battletech is I have a whole gaming case full of favorite units. And I can't play them all at once, even if I'm playing Alpha Strike. So I kind of cycle through uh, the mechs that I like to play, the vehicles. But this, the Warrior, VTOL, the Warrior Attack Helicopter, I consider an auto-include. I mean, at any, at any battle value, you need to pick up two of these immediately. You need to pause this and go to Amazon, eBay, or uh, Ironwind and pick up two of these vehicles because they are fantastic with how they work. So for about, uh, kind of going on memory here, for about 330 battle value, you get a SRM pack and an Auto Cannon 2 on a very, very light helicopter. I mean, it's got some armor bubbles, but you almost really don't even need the sheet with the armor bubbles. If you get hit, you're, you're, you're out. At first glance, you're like, well, Fritz, we're taking an extremely long-range weapon. We're pairing it with a short-range weapon on a very light airframe. So if I get up close to use the missile pack, then I'm going to get swatted out of the sky. If I stay at range and I use my speed, I'm going to plink away with the auto cannon too on there, which is okay, but then I'm not using full battle value because I'm not firing the SRM pack on there. Yes and no. Here's why the Warrior is, is so amazing for its battle value. You fly up high. You fly across the table. Now, if your opponent has uh, dedicated air support, you know, dedicated fighters or aerotech on there, well, okay, yeah, you're in trouble, but you're going to have some other air elements I'm going to assume you're going to bring. You fly across. It's almost like the, the Warrior is an air unit but exists on its own, completely separate battle chart on there. You fly up. You fly over your opponents, you get in the back, and you start plinking away with that auto cannon. It doesn't do much, but it's enough. It doesn't have the redundancy, right? That's the other thing. We're looking for, for weapon platforms with redundancy. If I've got, this is why I love the awesome. I've got three PPCs. I'm going to fire all three. I'm going to cook them off. Three will fire. Two will hit. One will cause significant damage on there, right? This, this kind of idea of one is none, two is some, three is one. Wait, one is none. Two is one, three is some, right? Redundancy on there. I'm already thinking about the awesome and the warrior VTOL, so I got to refocus here on that. So you have an auto cannon too. You're going to miss. You're probably at long range. You're going to miss. What's it really going to do? If it hits, it's light damage. But for the battle value, what you're paying for is a unit that your opponent is going to focus on. You are moving to the center of the table. We talk about how we want to dominate there. You've got your lances class clashing together. And there's this warrior just flying around, being extremely annoying and, and dealing with things. If that shifts a little bit of your consciousness to deal with the warrior, it's worth it. It's, it's worth the price of admission and battle value. So that's, that's the first kind of reason for it. Second reason, if you're playing combined arms, um, my lance advances, your lance advances, we're going to do our best to keep our tanks and keep our vehicles uh, facing, you know, front armor facing. We're still going to take motive hits, but we're going to try and minimize them on there. If I can take that warrior, I'm going to get side shots, long range side shots on your vehicles. That increases the chance for motive hits. Amazing. And in Battletech, yes, I want to destroy units. But if I can immobilize you with motive hits, even if you have a turret, if you don't have a turret, that's even better. Or if I can blow the legs off of a mech, uh, I haven't knocked you down in initiative, but I've essentially taken that piece out of the game unless I move in close. Not that the warrior is going to blow off a mech's leg, but those are free motive hits now that I don't have to break off a mech or a more important vehicle to try and get side motive hits on you. The warrior can do that. Third reason. So that's worth the price of admission right there. Third reason is now once you've clashed, once we've met mech to mech, and it's kind of like who's going to blink first? Who's going to pull back? You're trying to keep your mechs facing. We don't want to get rear armor. But essentially now, once the battle's been joined, so I've got three mechs, you've got three mechs, we're, we're at danger close, we're at close range, we're shooting, we're a couple of hexes away, three, four, five hexes away, you can't turn. You can't turn around 
because if you do that, you're going to give me side armor. You're going to give me rear armor. I'm going to be able to get that. You're trying to keep yourself forward. That's when the warrior sneaks in. That's when the warrior sneaks in, drops in right down behind. It has the speed to do it, to be there in one turn. Now you will be at point blank for the auto cannon too, and now you will be at point blank for the short range missile pack shooting into there. Now there's also some interesting variants, but we're looking at stock right now. It makes an amazing back hunter. Now, obviously, if I'm going up against a stalker or a battle master, I'll, I'll take some free back shots. But if it's against a lighter mech or a medium mech, suddenly that becomes very, very dangerous. Third reason, the final price of admission on there. And again, the battle value is like, what, 330? It's, it's nothing. It's nothing in there. If you're playing a 2,000 point battle value game, you can afford a warrior. And, and I, again, I believe like two, two is standard, kind of two work, uh, a wingman and kind of flying in there. Spotting. Spotting. Yes, we can use infantry for spotting, but they're kind of dug in. But if you're playing on a dense hill, a terrain dense hill, and you want to take it, advantage of indirect fire, or if you build a lance, you know, my longbow lance, uh, two longbows, two archers. So this way, if you close, the archers can brawl a little bit, and then they've got the medium lasers, and two long-range missile carriers. That is 20, 40, 50, 60, 120, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, it's like the 200, 20, 40, 50, 60, 260, 270, 280 long-range missiles coming at you a turn. Even with the indirect, even at long-range with indirect plus one, with movement modifiers for you, you know, if I need 10s, 11s, and 12s to hit, that's enough to soak even with 12s that I'm going to be hitting you indirect. I need a spotter. The warrior is going to be a spotter. You can't hide from it. And I'm going to be high enough up that I can see you. You're not going to be able to shoot at me. Again, for the battle value, that is tremendous. That is tremendous. So I consider we all have our favorite mechs. We all have our favorite units. But the warrior is definitely an auto-include. 